everybody, and welcome back to a special episode of The Creative Cranium. i got some terrific guests tonight. Please welcome to the show Mr. Stephen Prince of Monster Matador and Carissa Grant from Worthy Chaos. Welcome, guys. How's it going? Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Thanks again. I'm so excited to talk to you both. And we got a great show for tonight. And what we're going to do tonight is talk about one of the hottest topics on social media right now, which is ways to improve your algorithm. It's something that a lot of creators talk about, and they tend to say things like, well, the algorithm's holding me back, or I can't get the algorithm to cooperate. And what we want to illustrate tonight is maybe some tips or some things we could try that might improve the performance. And I'd like to start off by saying most people have it exactly wrong, right? Like, in other words, the algorithm actually rewards performance that does well. Phrased another way, if the algorithm isn't doing what you want to, it's a suggestion to try something different. Okay, so I'm gonna start out with Steven. So Steven, the first thing is, have you noticed any kind of social media posts that have performed any better than others? And if so, what kind of things were you trying? Uh, sure, I think, you know, usually it's something like a hot take, you know, or something that's commenting on something uh, that's current in pop culture, that tends to get a lot more uh, tends to have a lot more legs. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like you were saying, you know, it, wh whenever you're selling something, you know, or, or pushing something, it, it's going to be a much um, higher hill to climb. Um, and it's not necessarily the algorithm. It's just, you know, realistically, even like, you know, when you're, you know, large advertising companies, you know, they're looking at one or 2% people out of all the money that, you know, all the people there is, so if they reach a million people, they're looking for like, if 1% of those people, you know, engage, that's great. You know what I mean? That's what they're looking for, but they spend a lot of money to get that 1% engagement, you know, with comic creators, with indie comic creators, we're on a much smaller scale. So. Right. Right. And by the way, seem, you, it, it's going to seem like it is going to seem like the algorithm is working against you, but it actually, it isn't necessarily um, not working against you. Right. You answered exactly correctly. And for the people tuning in, give us some examples of, are you comfortable with giving a hot take on something? Like what kind of things would be in your wheelhouse? Or do you try to avoid that? I, I generally try to avoid it. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, okay. Not, we... Yeah. I mean, not even avoid it. I just, I, I do them every once in a while, but I find it kind of exhausting to have to look. Like... Yeah. Yeah. I'm right there with you. And I try yeah. to avoid that stuff too. So Carissa, let's jump over to you. Um, and your social media posts do pretty well. What kind of things have you tried that you find out have worked and what kind of things haven't worked? Well, um, so since I had a break from Kickstarter in December, I had no idea what to do with my life. So I focused on getting people, getting into people's algorithm. And to do that, I started posting questions. Every other day, um, depending on how well they do, I post a question um, and they do amazing. Yeah. Um, and I've gotten about 100 followers from it. I I, I noticed that my pre-launch, that's usually around 70, was 130 after that. Um, I think I posted one question and then like right away I had five extra, like the, within minutes I had five extra followers on my pre-launch and... Um, so they're getting between 100 and 200 comments uh, and it's working surprisingly well. It's slightly exhausting because I find the need to reply to every single comment um, because uh, one, I have this horrible thing that everyone needs to get attention. <laughs> like I, I don't like anyone feeling ignored. That's yeah. that's that's the only reason why the live shows are exhausting to me because every single time something pops up, I have to talk about it, talk to acknowledge them so they don't feel ignored. Um, and I like to talk to them. Like I I, I make um, you know, it's not just to uh get the algorithm up. I I want to talk to them and interact with everybody and and um I have uh interacted with everybody that has has messages and and I've been posting them on my own. I've been posting them in groups. Um. And uh, yeah, it's it's going pretty well. I think it's working because now with me interacting with them, I will show up more in their stream right. so that when I do launch a Kickstarter, they'll see it more likely this time. 
Correct. And man, I hope you guys are listening because she just answered that question exactly right. And by the way, you said two smart things, which one is you guys know I've been venturing into the show. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the, the one thing which is really smart is they say that posts that ask a question are, uh, and I'm, by the way, I'm going to circle back around to hot take, but we'll take the question for right now, which if you ask a question, oh. there's something in that that people want to engage, right? Could be, hey, what's your favorite movie? What's your favorite song? This kind of thing. People love to chime in and because it's, you know, they want to say what they think. It's social media, right? And of course, the second thing you said, and you've done a really great job with this, is individual interaction with the fans. And I try to remind people, and we were the three of us were talking backstage, we're all creators, and man, we want to support indie creators, and we love all these people that we work with. But the truth is, I think I speak for all of us, what we really want are more customers. And the, at the end of the day, you know, we want to find new people that will discover our work. And, it, you know, the group of creators is somewhat, you know, limited. You know, you're you're only going to reach out to so many comic creators, right? And like, and I'll just use Carissa, for example, and then I'll circle back around to Steven. Like in Carissa's case, man, she could get the, the horror people. I bet you the sci-fi people would like her books. Adventure. Uh, adventure people that like romance there's a lot of angles that would particularly work and you know monsters there's tons of monsters which i love um so to me that is you know your your ground for creating customers is very fertile you could get it from a lot of sources so swinging back around to steven the uh the hot takes and I'm the same way. I try to focus on positive things. Like I find that, you know, if you say positive things and talk about things you love, that's what you're going to get back, right? Or at least that's the hope. I don't do any hot takes. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't either. And I guess, um, and I wanna, we'll ask that question then because I don't do it either. I To me, I, it doesn't seem good for my brand. But let's ask Steven. So you don't do hot takes. You mentioned that it was kind of exhausting. But I guess we have noticed when you have people on YouTube and the various TikTok they always talk about, well, this sucks, or Marvel movies suck, or Star Wars sucks. You know, Every, just everything sucks. Just, yeah. And why do those type? This is your opinion, okay? I realize it's not maybe yeah, science, yeah, yeah. but why do you think that type of post gets so much traction? Um, I, like anything, people want to feel want their want to feel like they belong to something, or they want their opinion, opinion validated. I guess. I think they just um, like to argue. Yeah. yeah. And it's it's always been popular to go against the grain. Um, but it, it, it also, um, it's almost like a contest, you know, because, um, you know, you post something and then 100 people agree with you and you feel, you know, it's, there's a lot of psychology. <laughs> yeah, it. yeah. But, well, it, you and, know, it, it is. And, uh, and, I think and you have people, a point. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I think you have a point, and I think Carissa has a point, too. There is something about social media that invites arguing, I've noticed. And, you know, I – look, to me, I kind of don't have the time for it. You know what I mean? I don't – and by the way, again, I'm fond of saying I'm not disparaging anybody. That you know, We all got to find our way. You know what I mean? But I'm sure a couple of us have noticed there's people out there that are sort of firebrands and like leading this charge about how much movies are terrible and I can't believe there's a, a woman or a person of color and it like makes them kind of mad or something for some reason. Yeah, I, well, because they get response from it. Yeah. I, I genuinely don't think those people really believe or they've been doing it so long that they start to. But, you know, if I wanted get 10,000 followers, you know, I mean, I think today people were talking about, uh, I don't even know where it came from, that Star Wars was for men and not for right. women, and right. it became a whole thing. Uh, yeah. uh, okay, you know, uh, you know, or I can type on my thing, Zack Snyder is God, and, you know, I, I, I don't, you know, I, I, I don't know, I, I just, for me, and maybe because I'm a creator, I mean, there are things I like, there are things that don't like, these are extensions of conversations we all have with ourselves but um it, it just it, it it gets a little mean i think you know like yeah. it, it's one thing not to like something but it, it always tends to then kind of cross over into just you know shitting on the creators or the directors or whatever and as as, as someone who it's all of us you know who make you know whatever comics or you know stories we all know that you know even you know making a movie, uh, when something doesn't come out good, it's not because the people making it wanted it to come out bad. Mm -hmm. 
or it's not really a reflection of their talent. There's so many variables and so many things that happen, can happen, whether it's because of budgets or someone was feeling off the, or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? So I, 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 do, I, I don't I do. like to engage in that because I know that I know that there's more to it than something just being, you know. Well, and I always wonder, to be honest with you, I wonder if I'm sort of a kook because I sort of like a lot of things. Like yeah, I, yeah, yeah. The, the people scream about how bad the Star Wars movie, I kind of like a lot of them. And, yeah. but you know, if something's Star Wars, I'm almost like pre-wired to like Jedi. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I admit that one wasn't too good, but you know, yeah, you're yeah. not going to see me going, well, they shouldn't have, is that Daisy Ridley, right? In that one? Daisy Ridley, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you're not going to see me going, well, get rid of Daisy Ridley. She's this awful, like, I thought she was pretty good. Like, I, I yeah, to be honest good. with you, I didn't understand a lot of what the hate was. I will say that the story, I think they might have done better to make it a more cohesive trilogy. But, you know, that's, yeah. again, it's not the fault of the creators. So let's jump over to the next question. So, Carissa, you know, I've said, I think you do a great job interacting with the fans and stuff. <laughs> and, yeah, of course. And particularly, I think, it, and I'm the same way, it's very important to interact with each fan because at the end of the day it's not too different than having a store and a customer coming to our store you know you want to tell them have a nice day and you want to make them feel like they're a little special right so i guess i would start by asking you this question are you satisfied with the way the algorithm performs for you and for worthy chaos and if so why and if not why not um i mean obviously sorry <laughs> obviously it can always be better but currently, I'm a lot happier than I was uh, two months ago, because um, uh, I didn't I didn't ever really post anything before, uh, and mostly because I guess I had that fear that no one would answer, so I just I just never bothered, because uh, I don't like to be ignored when you know just like I don't want other people to feel ignored. I don't like to be ignored, um, so uh, I post I just happened to post something, um, and it just blew up. And um, from then on, I was like, well, I should just, you know, start asking questions. And I, I like to keep things very positive. I think the world's negative enough. I also right. think that, okay, yeah, negative draws a lot more attention, but I don't think it draws good attention. Right. I, I think the happier my interactions are, the more likely they are to follow me or buy from me or, you know, answer more questions and all that stuff. And I have been told by many or a few anyway, that we really appreciate all your positive, you know, posts and, um, and all that stuff. So I, I'd rather stick to something positive. I definitely stay out of any kind of politics or any kind of negative things, even if it's stuff I agree with, I just don't like to alienate the ones that it doesn't agree with. Um, I like to keep things pretty neutral and and stuff yeah. like that. So good for you, Carissa. That's a that's a great answer. And I, you, you know, we by the way, uh, Chris and I, some of you guys know we're friends a little bit, and we both are similar My in buddy. that regard. Yeah, we're we're pals since the old days. <laughs> but, but the truth is, I never say anything about politics or any type of divisive topic. And it's not because I'm, you know, don't want to argue or whatever topic you want to pick. But I just not good for the brand, right? We just, what we're looking for is customers. So Steven, let's jump over to you. Are you satisfied with the performance of your algorithm? And if so, why? Or if not, why not? Um, I think so. I, you know, I, I think, so what I, I, let me tell you, I started doing Kickstarter in 2020 and things have changed a lot. But remember 2020 was the pandemic. People were at home. They were focused online. Mm -hmm. They were buying online. You know what I mean? That's changed. So I think when, you know, what I noticed now is that uh, the, the algorithm is not as immediate, but the algorithm works over time. Mm. You know? Yeah, that's a good um, way to good way to say it. So so I, I am happy with it because what I've seen, you know, especially with my campaigns, with my, my stuff is, is growth. And a lot of times what people say, oh, you know, I, I remember seeing something about that last campaign or that you know, and they might not hit that, but then they see it again, you know, and that's the, the key to any, you know, cre creative, you know, uh, endeavor really is that consistency and just being there, you know, you might not grab it the, the first time, but you see it enough times, like any kind of advertising, it stays with you, right? right. And at some point, hopefully you're going to be like, you know what, even if, if you're thinking about it at some time, you know, you're going to engage with it. You're going to um, cross over. So I do think the algorithm works over time. I think we're so used to um, having things happen now, 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 
yeah Instagram. people don't want to wait for the algorithm yeah. you know yeah. but that's how these things work you know right. Uh, right someone who sees your thing today it might be a year before they correct but that's what that's why it's important you know to kind of you know keep moving ahead and Right. And th that's a good answer, too. And we sort of touched on that backstage that, you know, there's a tendency for, you know, it used to be kind of a joke for social media, like you might have an ex-girlfriend or ex-boyfriend look through your photos from a year ago, like about half stalking you. But the truth yeah. is, as creators, we often get uh, you know, I had a couple today that were over a year old and I just look at, them, I'm like, man, who is looking at, it was for the book lost at sea, which I'm very proud of that book. And we had a couple of videos for it, but like, it's getting clicks today. And I'm like, well, you know, what happened? And I guess there's something to the algorithm that says to customers along the lines of, if you like this, you might like this. And it throws it back up, you know, and I'm re referring mostly to uh, YouTube in that case. Um, I'd want to ask you guys this. I'll start with Carissa. Out of the different social media sites, do you have a preferred platform? Facebook, TikTok, Twitter. What's your yeah. favorite one? So I, I should revise my my answer because I only like Facebook now. And um I actually don't want to like Facebook. Uh but T the tell algorithm... us, tell us, tell us a little bit why you don't like it. Tell us why. Well, I don't like I don't like Facebook because I, I, I don't like the whole, you know, um, judgmentalness of the actual facebook like the bots that will zap me or I, i've been banned for stupid things they don't tell you mm. why you're banned for stupid things right um and things are automatic even though you didn't say anything wrong and blah blah, blah. um so i don't like that aspect i do like the free speech aspect of twitter however i get nothing on twitter now i used to get like thousands of views and now it's like 100 and i have 5.3 thousand followers on twitter and only the same 10 people do it. And I can't, I like, I try to interact with people and sometimes it works great. Like a poll will work, a question will work really well. Um, but not as, not as much as uh Facebook will. So mm, gotcha. as, as far as it's been, yeah. I mean, I've tried to ask the same questions on, on Twitter and I got nothing. Um, if I ask something, an opinion about something I want to buy or like, uh, merch wise, I get a lot of interaction. Mm. Um, but otherwise, which I guess is funny, it's not the other way around. Um, but uh, yeah, for some reason, Twitter doesn't work for me. And I, I stopped paying the uh, check mark because it wasn't worth, why Why am I paying for this if it's sure. not working? So sure. uh, yeah, I've, I, and I've focused mainly on Facebook now. Um, I do want to build up my YouTube. I hadn't really done anything with it, uh, so I want to. I absolutely hate Instagram. Sorry, I know it works for a lot of people. I was at a con and not one of them had anything but Instagram, but I hate it and I won't use it. I'm on there because there's people that want to talk to me, but I don't like it. I don't like the way it's used. I don't like the way the search is. I don't like anything about it. Um, and TikTok, I have like 1200 followers on there, but, um, and my videos would get good likes, but I don't feel like it does anything. No matter how many likes I get, I feel like it doesn't do anything. So yeah, Facebook is the only one that I'm really focusing on. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for that answer. Uh, Stephen, how about you? Do you have a preferred platform? And if so, why? Uh, my, my newsletter. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. And is you, are you a uh, Substack, MailChimp? What are you using? Um, I just did Substack because uh, MailChimp uh, just changed their. Whole... Yeah. <laughs> right there with you. That's when I switched. Do you uh, tell us what you, by the way, I'm biased a little. I switched over to Substack. But I joined I'd like... it because of you. Yeah. I, I want to hear what Stephen says. Tell me why you like it. Um, well, the newsletter, you know, you're getting engagement and you know, those are people that, you know, they signed up for it. So they, they want to hear from you. They want to know what you do. Yeah. Um, like, like Carissa said, I mean, Twitter used to be fantastic. I used to do great on Twitter and now, unless you're bitching about something or looking for, it's really hard to get in engagement. It's just goes in, into the void and doesn't really help. Um, uh, Facebook, um, Facebook has been hit or miss, but what I do like about Facebook out of all of them is that you can let, you know, you can get out of the Facebook ecosystem. So you have, so, so okay, hold on, going, tell, what, what do you mean by that? Tell us what you mean. Well, if you're putting, a, I mean, if you're putting a link, if you're, you know, pushing to a Kickstarter or whatever, right. um, you have more, I, I find more engagement on Facebook lately than I have on any other platform. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, Instagram is, I, I, I pretty much gave up on Instagram. Um, yeah, same here. It, it, it's, it's good engage, I mean, engagement, whatever, but there's no way off the platform. Right. It's you know not I mean? easy. There's no way, easy way to put a link. It's not easy. And, and as far as TikTok, I, I, I think I have a channel or I had a channel. I just, <laughs> yeah. But what I've heard from other people is the same as, as what Carissa said is that it's not really translating into anything. You're getting a lot of likes, you're getting a lot of, but it's not big, but the audience just isn't there for it. Uh, sure. And I will say Facebook, one of the things that I love about Facebook is that is, is, is the groups, you know, like for me, I do a book about a matador who fights Kaiju yeah. and um, uh, it, you know, I had a light bulb over my head, my last campaign of like, Oh, there must be like groups about Kaiju. Yeah. And yeah, there yeah. are, and, and, you know, I reached out to them and, and they've been huge, you know, they've been really helpful in supporting the book and I've been able to grow my audience through that. So what's nice about Facebook is you can find those little niches and actually engage with people. Whereas on, on Twitter, even if you're like tweeting about whatever niche or whatever, it's not really, it's not focused enough. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And yeah. there's too much ran- and there's too much randomness to the engagement. Yeah. I would agree with that too. And uh, sure. let's tie that into the next question because we had, you know, you talk about the Facebook groups and I'm the same way. I I do better in the, I'm in the sci-fi art groups, right? More so than the comic groups. And um, a couple of us know right, Sean Barber. Yeah. He has a great group. That's the Indie Comic Conspiracy. And they have a couple of great questions in there last week, or maybe it was a month ago, but the questions were, what can we do to make the groups more engaging? And by the way, I'm guilty of this. So uh, before it seems like I'm like blaming somebody or something, I do this myself. But we, some of us, myself, have a tendency to sort of spam these groups with our links. Um, What could we do? I'll start with Carissa. In your opinion, what could we do to help the groups be a little bit more interactive that might gain some traction? Actually, I just, I post my question in my personal and all, and like 20 groups. Um, I accidentally asked a very popular question today. And, what was the question? Can you tell us? Uh, what's your favorite quote or line from a movie? Oh, nice. And, That's a good one. Uh, yeah, but I should not have done it in 25 groups at one time because now it's like, I, I need a full-time job a- answering yeah. everybody. Um, but it definitely got a lot of interactions. Um, and yeah, I could see which groups are, you know, work better than others and, and which ones are more likely to get my my personal one gets the most interaction, but I get, you know, uh, I don't know, 30 to 50 on the group ones. So yeah. and I asked a really popular one two days ago and uh, it was. Would you rather be in a I oh know it's the second I've done a couple of them, mostly horror because they get a lot of interactions. But I think I said, would you rather would you be more scared of running zombies vampires or werewolves oh. um and uh i was werewolves because i already shoot zombies and <laughs> all my stuff on my stories uh but i just being clawed to death was not you know the most intriguing thing so um it got a lot of interactions and in a lot of the horror groups and and all that stuff um and people are very they like to give their opinions um yeah. I, i've only had one negative person and i don't think it was that one it was something else stupid um, but so far, everyone's been very positive about it. And sometimes it gets the conversation about zombies and I go, oh, I have a comic and they're like, oh, what's the comic? And so I actually interact with more people and bring up my comic that way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, adding them to the group. And there's also a trick, by the way, I don't know if you guys know this, but you know, when you're on Facebook, I think it's only on your phone, I think it's on your phone, but where you could post it to other groups when you post yours, well, it only lets you do three, right? But if you arrow out and arrow back in, you can actually do all you want. Oh, there's okay. my my tip. Pro for... tip. Thanks, Carissa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, I think I think that's a great idea that when you're doing there. So, and I'll ask Stephen the same question. Or do because I, I see you you and I are in the same groups too. And one thing I want to touch on because uh, you mentioned Substack. I'm a Substack guy. I got you know sort of coached to do it by Russell Nolte. You know Russell, right? Yeah, of course. Because he was one of the guys who. He got banned from Facebook for something ridiculous. Yeah, and something. Like, yeah, something. Yeah, like and that. and he really got screwed over. So he refuses to come back and use it. And were were you and I in that book together with him? I think we were. The anthology. Uh, which one? Which uh, the Cthulhu anthology. 
I forget how we uh, met the first time. I thought that was I, it, though. I, 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 I don't know. I, I think we're on a show together. I don't know. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Well, well either way, I want to ask you, based on the groups, um, do you – you know, the same thing I said to Carissa, do you have any kind of favorite groups and what are you using for your groups? Um, I do have, I mean, I have a couple, but it's, you know, it's hard. It's, it's just, there's so many groups, you know? Yeah. Um, there, there are probably like three or four that I'm more engaged with. And, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of those interviews ones where we all post our links, you know, but it's, you know, it, I, 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 I don't really have a good answer. Um, but it's, it's just, you know, there's only so much time in the day. There's only, only so much time right. you can be on Facebook. So it's really, well, I can tell you both you guys to my eyes are doing it right. Cause I follow both of you and I, I see your posts and, you know, I find them to be real engaging and stuff. You know, for me, I, you know, like I have my own, uh, business page and like the company page for earth dog studios. Yeah. And by the way, everybody's answer is different, but for whatever reason, and by the way, I answer every comment and I've done paid advertising and the whole bit, but my personal page where it's me, I will get 10 times the interaction if it's me. And I think that some of the answer, and again, viewers, please find your own path. Your mileage may vary, but there's something to be said for customers want to interact with the person. Like yeah. when it's my studio page, I can have the most beautiful artwork and the amazing things and, you know, get 10 likes on it, right? 15. I tell somebody I'm going to a convention and it's I get a hundred hits on my personal page. And it's like, well, that's not even as interesting as the, <laughs> you know, what, what do you mean? What do you guys, why do you find that so interesting? And it's got, I don't know the answer, but it's something to do with a personal connection between the product and the creator. It's, it's my two cents worth. Well, I, I mean, I, I think part of it too. I mean, what, what I do, when I do posts that aren't like that, like convention posts that aren't like, Hey, here's my Kickstarter. Right. It, it tends to get a lot more engagement. I think it's because people, uh, people want to support you, but they also hesitate where it's like, Oh, if I like this, are they going to be bad that I didn't go in? Uh, right. Right. You know, and, which, I and, wouldn't, which I wouldn't be because all of that helps again, but the algorithm you know, I have friends who, if I see a post, I'll do a a, a a quick comment like, hey, or whatever, because all those little comments, even as inconsequential as they might be, pushes. Uh, right. Yeah. You know, like, like Carissa said, each individual interaction increases yeah. your percentage of likelihood to show up in the next feed. And that's right. really smart to engage with each person. And sometimes maybe even I've done a couple times, maybe ask them a question. So they right. go again. You know what I mean? So you're right on the money, Carissa, about the questions. So it's let's jump over. Oh, what'd you say? It's bound to happen. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the next thing I want to ask is we talk a little bit about paid advertising and there's some conflicting opinions about this since we're mostly talking about Facebook. I'm going to ask the question that way, but please consider it for other platforms as well. I'm going to start with Carissa paid ads on the Facebook platform. What most of the time they call that a boost these days to you. Do you think that it is worth the money for the paid advertising? And if so, why not even a penny? Not even a penny. So yours is no. So I'm going to say, why not for you? I, I've, I've gotten likes, I've gotten views and nothing. Like it doesn't, doesn't seem to do anything for me. Posting on my own personal page gets me backers, but advertising doesn't seem to do anything for me. Hmm. Uh, I've even put it, I've had it tag everything. I've been, I've had it, you know, uh, be in all the groups and, and uh, specifically for this kind of person, and I don't know, it, it might just be, I might be doing it wrong. So it could be me. I just, I have not seen it. Uh, I might try one more time now that my algorithm maybe is a little better. Uh, I can try it one more time, but uh, I don't really think it helps me at all. Mm, good answer. Thank you for your honesty, Carissa. So same question for Steven. Uh, have you tried the paid ads or the boost? And for your brand, was it worth it? Did you get any bang for the buck? So, um, uh, one, I, I, I agree with, uh, Carissa, but when I, again, when I started back in 2020, I did Facebook ads, um, and they worked that, you know, I, I, I got, um, backers, you know, I got engagement yeah. from them. Um, after a while, um, and, 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 and it was like minimal spend. I wasn't spending that much, um. But I think you, are now, you by the way, are you comfortable disclosing how much I always tell people if you oh, don't want to send? No, no, I spent like I think at that time it was like, I mean, because just starting, I think I spent a couple hundred bucks. That's what I did. Yeah. 
but not, I, honestly, nowadays, unless you're spending like, you know, a thousand, you know, significant money, I, I don't think those ads are really going to work for you. Gotcha. Um, or at least that's what I've seen. And that's what I've heard. Like people, people that, that I know that have been saying, yeah, you know, I still do them. They work, you know, and then I'm asking how much they're spending and, you know, it's, it, it's a thousand dollars, a couple of thousand dollars, but their campaigns are, you know, significantly, you know, in the tens of thousands. And, and if your campaigns are that big and you're able to spend that kind of money, that's great. But, right. but if you're, you know, if you're in the five to 10 K range, I, I don't know that those ads are really going to, going to make a difference. But what, what I found the last time I did them was that I got, I got a ton of engagement, <laughs> you know? What do you but mean by a ton little... of engagement? Like likes, comments, what type of engagement? Um, I should say, um, it was uh, likes and whatever, you know, views, impressions, whatever they. Impressions. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Which, and, and then, you, you know, know clicks. I, I... I, I said that I wasn't going to complain about stuff, but, but that's one to me. I don't necessarily like the way they refer the data back to you because the impression doesn't exactly tell you very much, right? All that means is it right. went by in the person's feed, right? Right. But what I, what, what I meant was like, you know, when I first, you know, when I did them originally for, you know, it was like, I would see the impressions and the links and then uh, on Kickstarter on the dashboard, you can kind of see where things are coming from. Right. Where you're getting the customers from. And, and um Whereas, uh, um, you know, the last couple of times it was just impressions and like for a few links. And again, I, I was running them on Facebook, Instagram, and, and honestly, Instagram, it's just, um, you know, they, they don't really want you out of that ecosystem. Right. You said that, right. They sort of have it framed in a way that encourages the customer not to leave. Yeah. And, and Facebook too, but less so I think than, uh. And Instagram. Yeah, do you have any, Instagram, you can't even, yeah, you can't even. Do you have any thoughts anymore. about, sometimes people say, and I, I've done it both ways. And I, you know, again, I, I've done better with, they say, hey, don't put the link in the heading in the title. Your link should go in the comments. Do you guys agree with that? Or do you have a no. different opinion? Tell me your opinion, Carissa. Uh, there's a couple of reasons why I don't bother. Um, one, if you share it, the link's not there. Two, I seem to get just enough as engagement with the link in the title. In fact, I make the link the first thing at the top, unless I, unless I'm not, if I'm using a picture, I'll put the link at the top. So literally I just have to click on it. They don't have to actually read anything. Uh, if I don't, then it's, it's at the bottom. Um, but, uh, no, I don't, I don't like that one. I feel, I know this is stupid. I feel very disconnected when it's in the comments. I feel like it's not part of the post. Um, I might try, I might do it once or twice just to see if it helps. It doesn't. Um, and then again, when someone shares it, there's no link. So to me, it's not, it's not worth it. It's and definitely, I, yeah, not a perfect situation. I mean, when yeah. I share other people's, I try to copy their link, but sometimes it's hard to copy. It doesn't, for some reason, no matter how much I click on it. Yeah. Doesn't, so I'll just share it and, and then I, you know, whatever. But uh, yeah, it's not worth it for me. I get engagement on it with the link. I don't see why I would need to not have it. So how about you, uh, Stephen? Do you agree with that? Um, yeah, I, 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 you know, I, I've done it both ways and I've just kind of given, because what happens is like she said, people share it. I feel like I'm chasing everyone sharing it and pasting it in the links, but then like on Twitter, especially Twitter, if it's, people aren't like, they're just seeing your tweet. They're not going back, you know, they're not clicking and say, okay, let me, let me see the, they're just not, most people just aren't engaging like that. You know, no right. one wants, if they're going to take that extra step, you want them to take the extra step into your campaign sure you don't, because no one's going to take two steps you know what i mean like yeah yeah you're, you're less like you're lucky if they take one step you're lucky if they take one step exactly yeah. so so you might as well roll the dice and you know hope that that's the step they take and that it gets to them i was uh and by the way i'd like to ask smart people because i don't always know the answers right so the one who told me was pat shand we were talking about it oh, and yeah, i guess yeah. he always says that the kickstarter or excuse me i said it backwards facebook looks for three things to and what they call suppression, because the the reason they're trying to hold it down is they don't want you to leave the environment, like right. Stephen said. And they look for the word Kickstarter. They tend to not censor it, but they will not boost it either. Uh, the second one is the word link. And the third one is 
what they call a link above the fold. Like if you have your, you know how Facebook will fold it. So there's information's below the fold. If you're below the fold, supposedly that's okay. But it's like Carissa said, that's not perfect either because then you got to make the person still has to take the extra step, right? So, yeah, you know, what is the answer? I guess it's maybe a combination of both. So that's a tough one. Let's touch a little bit on um, one of the things they talk about for algorithms. We like to give people tips that they might want to try is the A-B test. And essentially what that means is you take essentially the same ad and either promote it with two different pieces of artwork or phrased with different wording. And then just you just test them, see which one does better. And then the one that does better, that's your official ad. And then you run it. So have you guys tried any kind of testing? And if so, did it work? Carissa, how about you first? Um, the only test I did was the link in the comments and the link in the thing, and I didn't see any difference, but, okay. um, I haven't tried, um, uh, trying to think if, well, you're saying if I do a different pictures, well, and it can be anything, but, uh, you know, essentially it's the same product, but you're just trying to, you know, one is taste great. One is less filling, right? So you just kind of see which one customers respond well, to. I think less words has worked better. Okay. If I put everything in there, I, I think people get discouraged. They don't want to read it. Gotcha. We're, 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 a lo we're a lazy society. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Which is funny because we're sending, we're, we're doing it so they read our books, but they, we can't, you know, you got to read the comment. Um, yeah. But I find if I just put, you know, horror, supernatural, you know, comic book series live now or something, I don't usually use the word Kickstarter um or i used to not i might have gotten lazy and now i use it but i i i, I was told that not to use the word kickstarter so a lot of times i'll use campaign mm -hmm. yeah. um i don't use you're not supposed to use the dollar sign either i don't know mm -hmm. if that's true or not I, that's what i heard i hadn't heard that but I, i'd believe it because it, like steven said if you're if it's obvious to the bots that run the system that you're selling something they don't want you leaving facebook they don't want you leaving the environment yeah. So Steven, do you do any kind of double testing, double blind testing? Um, I mean, when I when I ran those uh, those ads on Facebook and Instagram, I used to do the A/B testing. Um, I found stuff with like short videos worked pretty mm -hmm. well. Um, I, you know, I now I just it, it's a lot of throwing stuff at the wall. <laughs> right, right, yeah. See what I works mean. It and... really is, it, it, you know, things change so quickly, so fast that it's it's so hard to keep up. That you oh really yeah, just kind of. Um, but I'm, I, you know, especially like I'm in the middle of a campaign now. It, you know, it things it it things move so quickly that I, I really don't have like the chance to really stop and think and like really. Um, well, and I think we all have something in common that we're a little bit one man, excuse, one yeah, woman, yeah, yeah. one woman yeah. shows <laughs> like we don't in, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't, you know, I say Earth Dog Studios, but it's, you know, I work with artists and stuff, but I'm essentially, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm a one man operation, yeah. what they would call a sole proprietorship. Carissa, that's your deal too, right? It's mostly you running the operation. I right? run it all. Yeah. Steven, the same? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, more power to you. Um, yeah. Just a quick comment. One of the things to assist in your algorithm is also regularity of timed posts. Like if you, uh, and by the way, some of these, again, your mileage may vary. These are recommendations for people, but they say, if you go every day at the same time, what happens is your followers start to see it and they'll, they'll keep hitting at the same times, which right. again, like we'll use Carissa's example she's answering their questions, they're going to start to show up every day at nine or whenever. That's why you probably notice I try to always have an episode go up on Friday nights at nine o'clock. They tend to perform a little better. So do you ever, well, this is a two-part question, Carissa. Number one, do you try to time the posts? And number two is, do you ever use an automated service? You know, there's things like Hootsuite you can buy and you essentially what it does is you post one time and it'll go to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and it'll put it out to everywhere at once. Do you ever do anything like that? I have not done that. Uh, and I have not been regular, so I might try that. Um, okay. I have not done that yet. I generally think of a question. I was like, oh, I should post that. And then I don't have a very good short-term memory, so I just post it. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I've never noticed. I always say oh, I shouldn't do this on a weekend. But I got to be honest, I find a lot of engagement no matter when I post it. So it doesn't really matter. Um I guess if I was smart, I would do it at night on a weekday. 
Uh, like I, I have a show now. I go live on Mondays just for the hell of it, which, by the way, you're welcome on because you're awesome. No, thank you. Awesome. You're very kind. Yeah, we, we've done, a, 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 Chris and I, man, we're old school. We've done a bunch of stuff together. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I would love to. Uh, Stephen, how about you? Do you time your posts and uh, do you use, I'm using Hootsuite as an example because that's the one I know. I know there's many, right? There's Code Byte, yeah. there's all, but ha have you used any of them and do you think they're worth it? Uh, it's on my list of things to do. Yeah. <laughs> that I haven't gotten to yet. Uh, I, I try to post in the morning, um, but it's, uh, it's, I got two little kids at home and I'm always rushing uh, to school great, and then trying to, you know, it's, I'm always trying to get my posts in ahead of time, but I, I find that I'm always um, at the last minute. But I, I do try to post in the morning. I, I'm on the West Coast. Uh, so if I if I post too late, like if I post at like two o'clock, I feel like half the country's already kind of checked it's, out. You know, yeah, like it's in the middle of the night. Morning, yeah, so. sure. Well, and just, you know, for the viewers, I've used Hootsuite. It's not too bad. It's like $12 a month or something. Yeah. And what I used it for was essentially you write a Facebook post and mine went to, uh, it was Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and I'm missing one right now. But what I found was on these other sites, if you didn't have the engagement before, you're not going to pick anything up by using Hootsuite. Um, again, that's one man's opinion. I forgot to touch on LinkedIn. Um, I haven't had much success with it. I know some people seem to like it. Uh, Carissa, do you use LinkedIn at all? And if so, why? Uh, no, I have not used that. Um, I don't like spreading myself so thin. That's why I don't like all, I know it's better to be on all these sites, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, and I tried to do them all. And then I read once this guy that makes millions of dollars. So I figured he knows something about something. Mm. Uh, he says, just focus on one. And let yeah. that be your main focus and you can yeah. put all your energy into it because that way you get all their engagement and not spread yourself out. So, uh, no, I haven't. Um, but, uh, I, I'm just, I'm just going to focus on Facebook now. Oh yeah. And by the way, you're not wrong. Please don't take this as Tim saying that's wrong. I've tried LinkedIn and it's like a wasteland over there. I can't get any engagement at all. Um, Steven, how about you? Is, uh, LinkedIn a thing for you? I, I just I, I don't see the, I don't see why anyone on LinkedIn would be going to a Kickstarter. Right. Yeah. It's or, I um, mean it, it it seems like it's it, I mean LinkedIn is more looking more for work. Net, yeah, networking, yeah. looking for work and yeah. And I follow with a couple of people and I thought I might even be picking up some connections. But again, I'll give give you my two cents worth. I picked up bots like something crazy. And while there's we're uh, yeah, there's a lot. And while we're on the subject of bots. I will, first of all, let me, you know, I know both you guys and I'm one of your followers. You probably notice I follow your posts online and I'd like to thank you for not constantly using the at everyone spam attack. You know, I'm not kidding you. I now get so many uh, notifications from bots and spam. Yeah. It's almost difficult for me to use Facebook. Like I think when I logged into, hmm? you can turn that off, you know, well, you can only turn it off once it's been done to you. The, no, I, I'm, oh, uh, you talk about groups or you talk about your personal highlight thing? I'm talking about at everyone, which people do it and they say, hey, well, I want you to see my new book and they at everyone, it goes out to everybody. And know, you can, you can turn phone. it off, but you can't turn it off before they do it. You, you no. got to wait till you're notified and then turn it off. No, what I mean is, are you talking about just in groups? Or are you talking about your personal page getting zapped by other people on your list? I guess it's both, but like I say, I had something like you 31. You can turn that one off. I'm just letting you know. You can, you, because I used to get all those mentions or highlights or, yeah. uh, or the the everyone in my personal. Uh -huh. If you go to notifications, you can turn off group, uh, mentions, and it turns them all off. Oh wow, that's great to know. I, I'll yeah. try that tonight because yeah, I found that out and I was like, this is awesome because what people were doing, they're like, oh. Uh, and they're so stupid. People are so stupid. I, I love people, but there's a select few out there that really shouldn't like talk to people. Um, but they're like, oh, if you want to see who follows you, put um, at highlights in, in the comments below. Mm -hmm. And it was like seven times a day. Right, so I had to right. figure out something. And when I turned it off, my life has gotten a lot better. Well, right. And it's kind of a thing where 
here's what people say, and it's completely inaccurate. They say, well, I'm not getting enough engagement from my followers, so I'm going to force everybody to where they have to look at the post. It's like, no, wait a minute. I'm already your follower. You know, I want to discover it. Don't make me follow it. You know what I mean? But where I'm going with this is I noticed both of you guys don't do that. So thank you. I appreciate it a great I, I deal. Did, I literally did it once, and it was to show everyone how to turn it off. So I was like, just, just so everyone knows, this is how you, and I put screenshots, this is how you turn it off because I find it so obnoxious. And I, in the beginning, I was just leaving every single group that did it. I, that's what I do too. You know, and you know, I'm not a jerk or anything, but I have unfollowed and left so many groups in the last week because I just, I can't, it's so many, I can't manage it. You know what I mean? And it's like, look, I follow you guys anyway. Don't make me do this stuff. You know what I mean? Like I most creators- my- I think what I turned off, turned off my group ones too. I have not gotten one group one since I turned it off months ago. So, I, I, I'm going to try that tonight. That's yeah. a great. Go to your notifications and go to a uh, group turn off, uh, like group mentions or something. And then it turned it all off. So, well, thank you, Carissa. That's a great tip. And Hey, we're, <laughs> we're winding, school. we're winding down here to the last part of the show. So I want to ask you guys about these terrific products you're making. I'm a fan of both of your work. I'm going to start with Steven here. That's monster matador. That's on Kickstarter right now. Let's, so let's start out by how many Kickstarters have you done? Uh, seven. Seven. Yeah, so you're this right is my me. seven. Yeah, this is my excellent, seven. excellent, and it's been a very successful series for you. Yeah, yeah, it looks terrific, yeah. man. And can you tell us a little bit about who will love this series? So uh, anyone who likes uh, action, uh, kaiju, um, if you love eighties action movies, um, if you like good comics, you'll love it. Uh, it is. I love all like, those uh, things. Yeah, I mean, it is, it's a post-apocalyptic uh, kaiju throwdown about a matador who fights monsters. <laughs> this is great. Uh, to make I, man, I got to ask you, how did you come up with that concept? I love the concept, but it's out there, dude. It's it's one of those, you know, honestly, I, I've always been obsessed, not obsessed, but I've always kind of had a uh, thing for matadors because my uh, grandfather's like Spanish, like family. And when I was a kid, they gave me a uh, a matador hat. So I've always kind of been aware of them. Oh, and uh one day i was just sketching and i sketched a matador and i sketched i think a godzilla style monster and then i just went huh monster matador yeah you know? it's one of those things right where first of all it's very original like you wouldn't think that would go together yeah, 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 but it yeah. somehow kind of does right and, and it makes it makes so much sense and it's one of those things when i was like oh someone must have done this already because it's so obvious maybe i don't know but uh yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's just, it, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, we just introduced in our newest campaign, we just introduced monster fighting luchadors. <laughs> That's um, terrific too. I love luchadors. <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's like, um, you know, a telenovela mixed with uh, Sa- a Santo movie and, and, you know, crossing over with Mad Max and Godzilla. That's how we kind of describe it. So it's That's really terrific. And who is your, uh, who's your team working on the book? And I'm going to, while we're chatting, I'm going to show some of the art samples. Okay, so I've been very lucky. We've been able to keep to get the team together now throughout all of these campaigns. We are on the second issue of our new series, Once Upon Some Monsters in Mexico. We're actually working on the fourth issue of the series, um, all by the same team. The artist is Fabio Alves. Nice. Uh, he, he has done work. He has done uh, The Jump with Rylan Grant. He did Banjax, yep. uh, which was put out by Action Lab. It was nominated for Ringo Awards. He was nominated for a Ringo Award for Best Cover Artist. And our colorist is Alex Zeff, who is um, an amazing colorist. Uh, she did uh, Cult of Dracula from Source Point Press. Oh, right. I know that book. And, and, and this and the sequel, I forget something of Dracula. Maybe it was Rise of Dracula or something. I forget. Um, and and she's been just really kind of tearing it up on the indie scene. She's she's done a lot of uh, Hell Her Way was her most recent, and she did uh, Carmilla for Bloodline Comics. So. Well, man, it looks terrific, Stephen, and I wish you every success. Viewers, I'm going to include the links. You can go over and check out Monster Matador. That's on Kickstarter right now, and it's highly recommended. Definitely a terrific title. I'm so honored to have all the monster people in the house today. We also (laughs) got Carissa Grant with Worthy Chaos. And uh, Carissa, man, this is a terrific series. Can you tell us a little bit about who is going to love Worthy Chaos? Oh, the list is so long. (laughs) Yeah. Um, We have, uh, if you've ever watched... Buffer the Vampire Slayer, Supernatural, The Crow, uh, Evil Dead, Silent Hill. Um, Resident Evil is in there, right? Resident Evil, yeah, the Silent Hill, the um, 
uh, I good love Omen. Silent Hill. Yeah, I love Silent Hill too. Um, so anything like that, I mean, uh, you know, it's got angels and demons and zombies and and hellhounds and uh, Egyptian gods and yep. um, we got Anubis know, in there. Yeah, Anubis and his hellhound that he plays fetch with for some reason. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, and you have the underlining love story that um, I didn't think people would really i mean it's no it's not mushy or anything but uh there is that deep bond that they have yeah it's got um, a cool romance element in it yeah, too. like, it like you wouldn't sell it as necessarily a romance but it is yeah, no. <laughs> yeah i don't sell it as a romance um but uh, i was surprised i was actually slightly worried that it was a horror movie uh, a horror story with uh uh the underlining romance to it i've been calling it romeo and juliet in hell you know um, <laughs> that's and, a pretty cool uh, slogan yeah so and and surprisingly people have really liked it like even guys like i've had you know guys come up to me like i really love the the connection these these two have and and they're ruined for them you know and they have that will they won't they thing going on where um you know, for those that don't know, uh, our two main characters are written by two different people. I, I write the story and I write everything Serafina, but I never write Draven's thoughts or or um, speech with anything like that. And Draven thinks a lot. You know, I mean, he's all his emotions are in his thoughts and you get to understand the the pain that he feels and, and, the, and the struggle that he feels because he's he's absolutely positively in love with this woman who he thinks should stay as far away from him as possible because he's a deadly assassin who's just killed people with no remorse or whatsoever. Um, and it's kind of funny because you have these two, you know, he's this badass assassin, you know, and he's cursing people out and, and killing people with, you know, with no problem. And then I'll be like, I'll be right there, sweetheart. And he's like, you know, slashing some guy's throat, you know? So uh, it's kind of funny to see this big, tough, bad demon assassin and then be like, all right, darling, let's get going. You know? So it's, it's, it's kind of cool to see the, the two sides of him. He's only like that with her and it kind of, gives it that unique story to it that uh, I, I love. That was the main reason I, I wrote it. We just love the bond between these two and, and all that. And uh, they have such a history because they're soulmates and they've been through different lives together and, and they never remember any of it. Um, but they always get that uh, attraction in every single life that they're just drawn to each other. Um, and there was a prophecy written about it and now it's controlling their lives that they have no idea what it's about. Their fathers are after them. They're trying to get the angelic weapon that Serafina was uh, created from. And if they can achieve this weapon, they can tip the scales of heaven and hell in their favor during the war. Uh, the only problem is that Serafina's soul activates it. And if they use her soul for it, there's no more reincarnating. There's no afterlife. There's no nothing. And they'll be separated forever. Um, so the stakes are a little high for them. So Cool. cool. Hey, and yeah. can you give us a quick shout out for your creative team? Uh, yeah, uh, Jonas De Costa is the artist. Uh, it was his first paid job, you know, 12 issues ago. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, he's been rocking it nonstop since. Uh, you know, issue eight is live now on Kickstarter for another week or two. Um, but we're already halfway through uh, issue 12. You know, we're, um, he's just so fast and the skill is so amazing. And it's just, I, I could not do this. Without. Everyone's like, oh, you're, you're so amazing to get these out. I was like, nope, it's my artist. You can. You could thank him. He gets them all out. And I think, you know, and some people might not know, there's a hundred issues already written for this, you know, and uh, 45 of them are this series. So series one's 45 issues. Um, and I'm going to get them all out. They're released every other month. Uh, we did add a colorist for this uh, uh, issue eight for the second book. Uh, Matt Chambers, who I stole from Lori. If anyone doesn't know, it's Path of the Pale Rider. It's an epic freaking uh, series. You got to read that too. Yeah, we uh, her trade's Lori. coming out soon um but uh yeah uh he's an amazing colorist he definitely leveled up the color and um and sk everyone should know who sk is uh yeah. but he's an amazing letterer who puts so much emotion into my characters he literally gave them a voice and i thank him all the time that he's just so amazing at it so uh, i'm hoping that uh if i ever get to release all these as a box set i'm gonna redo all of book one with uh, sk doing the lettering and uh, matt chambers doing the coloring so um, but that's Terrific. an ex that's an expensive endeavor because it was 222 pages. Um, but yeah, it's uh, you know, and I have the um, you know hardcover out um, that anyone can get as a tier on its own. This is very popular selling this campaign because you could buy this and issue eight and you're all caught up. Um, and this is only 40 bucks, so okay. uh, a lot of people have been getting that. Like I said, it's a it's seven issues and 222 pages. So um, yeah. I got a lot. Awesome. I got a lot more new buyers, backers this time than I've ever had before. I got uh, twenty five or more so far. 
Perfect. Well, we got just about four minutes left. Hey, Stephen, can you tell us real quick where the viewers could find you if you want to shout out your website? Uh, <clears throat> MonsterMatador.com. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at MonsterMatador. <laughs> Easy. It's Easy any, to find. Anywhere, anywhere you find Monster Matador, you'll find me. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Carissa, how about you? Uh, the easiest thing to do is to search Worthy Chaos on Kickstarter. We are always in either live or pre-launch. I actually have a pre-launch for issue nine already up, but uh, it, you know, if you search it, you'll see that there's a live one too. So searching Worthy Chaos, or we do have a website, uh, worthychaoscomics.com or theworthychaos.com is the Kickstarter if you ever want to go through the link. But Worthy Chaos is the easiest way to get me. Excellent. Well, I'd like to thank you guys for sharing your thoughts on improving the algorithm. This has been a great show, man. I really got some good tips from it. I hope it is helpful to the viewers and I wish you the best of luck with your thank Kickstarter you. projects. Nice to meet right. you, Steve. Good Thanks. night, everybody. Thanks.